I'm here today to talk about 10 things that you need to stop believing about Tudor people. Number one, that they were dirty and smelly. Now, of course, I'm sure there were some people that were dirty and smelly, just as there are today. But just because the Tudors didn't regularly bathe in a full bath or have showers like us today, it doesn't mean that they were dirty. They changed their underwear, which consisted of a linen shirt or smock, regularly. They rubbed their skin with a linen cloth combed their hair with a comb which had wide teeth on one side for detangling and fine teeth on the other. They cleaned and polished their teeth and some did use water to wash as well. Historian Ruth Goodman lived like a Tudor woman and found that changing her smock, rubbing her skin and combing her hair kept her very clean. Number two, that they all got married young. Although marriage was permissible from the age of puberty, 12 for girls and 14 for boys, and there were cases of noble families marrying their children off much younger than that, people of the lower classes of society wouldn't tend to marry until they were in their mid-twenties, when the young woman had saved up a dowry from her earnings. Number three that they were forced to marry people that they didn't like. Although marriages for the wealthier classes were arranged, parents usually didn't tend to force their children to marry people that they really didn't like. Those marriages wouldn't be successful, would they? But these matches may not have had much to do with love, but it was hoped that mutual respect would turn into affection, at least. The lower classes were luckier in that they could usually marry for love, meeting potential partners through work or at community events like dances, wakes and weddings, haymaking or the celebration of feast days. Number four, that they were messy eaters, throwing meat bones over their shoulders, etc. No, Tudor children were taught good manners from a young age, including table manners, such as washing their hands before and after eating, sitting upright, saying the grace. And although they didn't tend to use plates and a knife and fork like we do today, a piece of bread or a trencher was used as a kind of plate and a knife was used for eating along with fingers, which were cleaned between courses using bowls of water, sometimes scented water. Number five, that a Tudor woman's place was in the home. Well, not always. Not every Tudor woman was a housewife. Some took the veil and became nuns and others went into trades. Some even went from being apprentices to running their own businesses in their own right, working as silk women, chandlers, glovers, bookbinders and more. Number six, that the Tudors didn't drink water. While ale was the staple drink, people in rural areas with access to water from springs could certainly enjoy drinking water. Number seven, that the Tudors only ate meat. Well, the wealthier classes certainly focused on meat as it was expensive and it showed their status but your normal average Tudor person would eat plenty of fruit, vegetables, and also grain in bread and pottage. Number eight, that only the upper classes were educated. Education was important throughout Tudor society. And even if literacy wouldn't have been seen as particularly important for say a poor rural little girl, she would have been taught good manners, the Lord's Prayer, the Ave, the Apostles' Creed and the Ten Commandments and how to run a household. If her mother could read and write, then she'd pass those skills on to her daughter. Wealthier children would definitely learn to read and write and would also learn music, dancing, Latin and French, manners and morals, etc. Number nine, that people never left their villages. Some people, especially poorer people, might spend their whole life in one area or village, but many travelled around for work, on a pilgrimage or to visit markets and fairs. Number 10, that Tudor people lived in squalor. While cities could be dirty and smelly, 
Tudor people worked hard to keep their homes clean and free from things like fleas and rodents. Scented rushes or rush mats would cover the floor and would be replaced when they got smelly or broke down, deteriorated. And the Tudor housewife would clean the house, do the laundry regularly, clean pots and pans, and keep clothes fresh and moth-free by using things like lavender, citrus peel or wormwood. She was house proud. Now those are just 10 myths, and I'm sure that you can think of many more about Tudor people and the way they lived. So please do share by leaving me a comment. Thank you so much, and please don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed it, and to subscribe to my channel. It just helps other people find my work. Take care, I'll see you soon. Bye bye.